Let's look at the character of Prospero. Now, Prospero is the protagonist of the play, and we learned that he used to be the Duke of Milan until he was usurped, which means kicked out of power by his brother Antonio with the help of Alfonso, who is the King of Naples. Now, we learn at the stage that the play starts, he has been living in exile away from Milan with Miranda, his daughter, on an island near Italy for 12 years. And during that period, he has taught himself magic and become a very powerful magician. Indeed, he has two slaves who also know magic, both Caliban and Ariel working for him as well. Now, he decides to cause this shipwreck in order to both reclaim his title as Duke, but equally teach Alonso and his brother Antonio a lesson in terms of not betraying him. Now, I've mentioned this before, however, bear in mind that the play Tempest is a tragic comedy, so that's its genre. Now, the tragic aspect of this play, in other words, the uh, tragedy is known as any type of play which has a main character that has a flaw that leads them to uh, cause a series of mistakes. Bear in mind, you check out uh, my video where I go over Aristotle's tragedy in a bit more detail if you're not entirely clear. However, going back to this play, Prospero is presented as a tragic character insofar as his fatal flaw was that he trusted his brother too much and this opened him up to betrayal. That's how he lost his title as Duke of Milan. However, the play does have comedic elements. That's why it's a fusion of both tragedy and comedy. And it does end well with Prospero renouncing his magical abilities and planning to go back to Milan to regain his title. And also he forgives his brother as well as the King of Naples. Now, of course, if you're writing about this play for your coursework or exams, you need to be able to be very well versed with the character of Prospero being the protagonist and so I have prepared all the key quotations to bear in mind with his character if you're writing about him either for your course or exams and for each quotation I'll point out all the word level analysis you need to do because of course when you're writing about a quote it's also very important to add word level analysis. So let's start with the first quotation. And this is when he is explaining to his daughter Miranda, so this is when Prospero is explaining to his daughter Miranda how his brother betrayed him and how he ended up losing his title of Duke of Milan. He states, and my trust, like a good parent, did beget of him falsehood in its contrary as great as my trust was. Now here what he's basically saying is, he trusted his brother too much, he trusted the appearances too much, and this led him to be misguided by his brother's fakeness, his duplicity, okay? And of course, this is what leads his brother to successfully usurp him. Remember, usurp means kick him out of power. Now, of course, this quotation illustrates Prospero's fatal flaw, which is that he trusted other characters and trusted appearances too much. Now, the word level analysis you want to do for this quotation is firstly the contrast in the pronouns my versus him, of course, showing the difference between uh, Prospero's very trusting, kind nature, as opposed to his brother's duplicitous, false nature. This is him. Also, you want to focus on the repetition of the noun, the abstract noun trust, hair and hair. And of course, this shows us Prospero's fatal flaw. He was too trusting as a character. And the final word level analysis you want to do is the simile like a good parent, showing just how much he invested in his relationship with his brother, only for his brother to take advantage of his trust and kindness. Also showing that Prospero, when he used to be Duke of Milan, he was a little bit too naive. Now, the second quotation for Prospero's character is when he states, and this is when he realizes that his magic has worked and it's, he's successfully shipwrecked uh, the ship that's carrying Antonio and Alfonso. He states, my high charms work and these mine enemies are all knit up in the distraction. So of course here, we learn that he's really happy that this shipwreck has worked because now he's gonna be able to manipulate these guys and ultimately this is gonna feed into his final plan in order to regain his title as Duke of Milan. Now, the word level analysis you want to do here is firstly the alliteration of M in my and mine, also the assonance of E in these mine enemies, okay? Now here we can see that, of course, the comedic element of the play is being set up. Here we learn at this stage of the play that he has successfully shipwrecked these men and we are interested and keen as the audience to see how this shipwreck unfolds. Now, the third quotation to bear in mind for Prospero's character is when he states, spirits, 
which by my act, I have from the confines called to enact my present fancy. So again here, he's talking about his magical abilities, the spirits, the supernatural world, which he's able to conjure, he's able to call upon in order to help him both misguide and mislead these men, but also of course shipwreck them too. So he's really happy and he's quite gleeful. Now, this is interesting because do bear in mind that contextually, during Shakespeare's time, people used to see the supernatural and spirits as quite evil forces. Now, arguably you could say the fact that Prospero has used his spiritual forces to shipwreck Alfonso and his brothers Antonio's crew. This is maybe an evil element. However, it's for the greater good. It's for him in order to teach them a lesson and also to regain his title. So this is interesting because contrary to Shakespeare's other plays where the supernatural is presented as very dark evil forces. If you think about, for instance, Macbeth, where the witches cause chaos. Here, this is very managed chaos because Prospero has an ultimate aim, whilst the supernatural in other Shakespeare's plays, they don't have any aim. They just want to cause chaos and disruption, okay? Now, the word love analysis you want to do here is firstly the abstract noun spirits, then also the alliteration of confines and calls, the alliteration of C here, and finally the assonance of E in an act present and fancy. So of course here, what Prospero is basically saying is that he's using the spirits in order to get what he wants and what his ultimate aim is, being restoring his title as Duke of Milan. The next quotation to bear in mind for Prospero's character is when he's describing how horrible, deceitful his brother Antonio is. He states, a devil, born devil in whose nature nurture can never stick. So now here what he's basically saying is uh, his brother Antonio is just an evil person. He is inherently evil. There's nothing good about him. And actually, even if you um, gave birth to somebody like him, his nature is so evil that even if through nurture you try and teach him good things, he's still inherently evil. Now, the word love analysis you want to do here is the repetition of the word devil, which of course sets Antonio up as one of the antagonists, one of the villains of this play. And of course, the fact that he's been referred to as a devil is a metaphor. And finally, you want to look at the alliteration of N in nature, nurture, and never, okay? And of course, what this alliteration does is it shows how angry Prospero is, how emphatic he is when he's describing just how horrible his brother is in usurping him and betraying him. Now, the other quotation to bear in mind for his character is when, of course, he has successfully um, shipwrecked these men. He's caused, uh, he's even taken Alfonso's, uh, Alonso's brother and his brother, his little son, rather, Ferdinand, and Ferdinand then falls in love with Miranda. Then Prospero ends up revealing himself to them and letting them all know that they have betrayed him and he is still not vanquished. He states, at this hour, lie at my mercy, all mine enemies, okay? So of course, we know that he uh, wants to pay them back. And here we can see that he does have power over these men. Now, the word love analysis you want to do here is alliteration of M in my mercy and mine. And of course, what this is showing is how victorious Prospero feels at submitting these men. Now, contrary to what we would expect, which is, for example, these men betrayed him, therefore he's probably gonna inflict really horrible punishment on them, maybe even kill them. Prospero actually forgives him. So this shows just how honorable Prospero is. He has all this power over these men, especially his brother and the King of Naples who betrayed him. But rather than um, doing an eye for an eye whereby he basically hurts them, harms them, or even kills them, he actually forgives them and tells them not to do what they've done again to him, which is betray him. Now, the final quotation for Prospero's character is when he does renounce his magical skill and his magical ability. He has used the supernatural for his aim. He now, the, the, the idea and the possibility of him successfully returning to Milan and restoring his title as Duke is now a really palpable, a real possibility. He states, but this rough magic here I abjure. Now, this is what we call a declarative sentence. Bear in mind, a declarative sentence is a sentence that states a fact, feeling or mood. Here we can see that he's stating the feeling that he's going to be renouncing his magical qualities. Also, the other word love analysis you want to do is the adjective rough. Of course, here what he's talking about is he's used his magic in a very harsh way in order, and, and of course his magic is very powerful, and it's so powerful that it caused this massive shipwreck. However, we can see here Prospero's character is actually quite honorable. He doesn't want to keep uh, onto his magical qualities, his magical abilities. He just wanted to use it in order to restore his title. And once he's done that, he's not greedy. He gives up his magical abilities, okay? So do bear in mind that Prospero is presented as a very admirable protagonist. However, his fatal flaw is he trusted others too much, particularly his brother, who were able to then use this trust to betray him. So that's it. 
when it comes to key word level analysis to do for all the quotations relating to Prospero's character.